All right. I think I've got it all. It's a good size show. It's going to be too much. Mm -hmm. Probably. Good problems to have. It's not a bad problem to have while I sip this matcha tea on episode 426 of We Were Gamers. Um, JJ, I believe you also grabbed the Itoen matcha tea from Costco. Oh, yeah, yeah. I drink that at work several days a week. I have become quite the fan of the tea bags from that company. Yeah, they're nice, right? It's refreshing. It's light. It has just enough caffeine if you sip it throughout the day. It's good. It's good. Maybe it's better than a Thanksgiving pizza, Michael? I don't see how it could be worse. Are we convening the court? I feel like we have to. All right. Run us through it. Oh, I was doing a late night grocery store run the other day and did oh, this a, is a live picture. This is this is my picture. I took this picture for you. I thought this was an internet photograph. No, I found this at my local Ralph's. That makes it worse. It does it definitely make it worse. does. It definitely does. It is not an internet thing. It is a real life horror show. Is uh, okay. One. Are there cran is the sauce cranberry also? So I can't or is that it just I can't pizza sauce. So that I couldn't tell, right? So well to just the quick rundown of the description here. It is a Detroit style pizza. Um, I'd take umbrage with Detroit style to begin with, by the way. Oh, okay. Because you think I'd it's a casserole or like So Detroit style is deep dish. Mm, yes. Sort of, yes. Right? Or no? No, it, I mean, it's toppings on top of sauce, which is not really the deep dish way. It is a, it is a deeper crust than, I think, just about any other style than deep dish. Um, it's not just the shapes that's square. It looks, to me, like square deep dish, and that does not look like it deserves its own style, in my opinion. So the other but thing... if it's deeper than that, haha pun... Uh, you need to tell me so that I can back off the gas on my dislike of the style. There is more to it than that. It is it's it's cooked in a particular type of pan, but it also has a ring of cheese put into the pan before the dough. So that crispy outside isn't just um, hard cooked bread. It's actually melted cheese like browned cheese. All right. I admit to my lack of understanding. And uh Detroit style gets a pass until I try it. I'm learning that the pizza place we used to go to when I was a young kid actually may have been a Detroit place. I thought it was a deep dish thing all along. It did that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There you go. Uh, I personally am a big fan of Detroit style. Okay. Uh, so I'm yeah, to it. Give, it a, give it a shot. See what you think before you, uh, you pass any further judgments. And we, we've already been through the deep dish argument on here. Without much resolution, thanks to it just being popular enough that we can't uh, say it's a crime. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I'll say about it that's nice is the square form factor is really useful for like saving later because it like fits oh, yes. and stuff. Yes. Well, so, or just wrapping in foil. Well, Italian pizza is not opposed to being square. And so my takeaway from it was it was square deep dish and neither of those things were original. Right? Like, we, we just returned from Italy. We got a square pizza. It's not, mm -hmm. it's, you know what I mean? It's not, I'm not they against just, square pizza. Yeah, it's not like it has to be a circle, right? But the, I don't the Detroit think so. one always is a square. I mean, yeah. hand make your own dough and then tell me how good of a circle you made. Yeah, right. <laughs> as, a, as a person who makes their own pizza sometime, I'll tell you, if it looks even vaguely circular, <laughs> we're yeah. winning. You know, by the time I get it off the uh, pizza peel and into the oven, it's definitely a football shape. Oh, yeah. No matter what yeah. it started as. <laughs> we had one that looked like the United States one time, and we thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It all tastes the same. Uh, okay. That does. Okay. But it doesn't preclude that this pizza looks terrible. So Detroit style pizza. 
and that's where the fun stops. <laughs> Jesus. So I can look past. I can look past the green beans on it. Crispy onions, fine. Like that. That doesn't bother me at all. I can even get past the dried cranberries. Like that to me is interesting enough that I would m- maybe try it on a pizza. You're getting. Right? You're getting past all the things I don't want to get past on this pizza. <laughs> but where where I draw a hard line is the gravy drizzle on top. Oh, weird. That's really weird to me because to me it was the cranberries and the green beans, uh, maybe a little bit of the gravy that were the problem. The green beans, I think, are just weird. I don't, I don't know that I have a problem with it without, you know, without actually trying it and saying no, this is too weird. I, I wouldn't put I... raisins on a pizza, so I'm also thinking like dried cranberry makes no sense. But I was wondering if it was going to be the sauce. What like, else is on uh, these slices of turkey? What the heck are these big yes. things? I, uh, yes, big, so slices, roast, of big slices of roasted turkey. This looks repulsive. <laughs> it does look, it just looks terrible. It just looks terrible. Crime. Anybody else? Oh, it's like, uh, I don't think there's, there's any dissent this okay. week. You can convict this from the picture. You don't even need to look at it in person. Okay. DiGiorno, take it off the market. Be an American. Make people make their own dang turkey. I don't think even the turkey is the problem. Like putting roasted turkey on a pizza is unusual, but like not illegal. Right? I I wouldn't convict you for that. Yeah, I mean chicken chicken goes on turkey at, at this yeah. point, and yeah. and is widely accepted, and even I mean definitely by me. Uh, I mean I love so. buffalo chicken on pizza, so like you don't even got to. True, but like the the cranberries and green beans are that is a bridge I will not cross, even ignoring the gravy, which I also don't want. Yeah, it's funny because you'd be like, "Uh, I put gravy on it," and you're like, "Oh, like a uh, homestyle gravy, huh?" No, 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 like uh, like meat gravy, and that's where you lose me. <laughs> you know, yeah. individually, Whatever. any of these pieces might be okay. On top of a pizza, also no. Yeah, well, One bridge too far. It's a crime. Probably not as big a crime as that Tyson fight. Uh, I feel like if you bet on that, uh, you deserve to have lost your money. And also, people should be uh, put in jail for fixing the fight. So just, just so you know. I know we're not big uh, discussers of boxing on here. No. But sometimes, someday, come up and for somebody in this situation. You know? Like, why were you made aware of it? That's what I want to know. Like, I don't know how social, you would not have been made aware. Social of it. media is the only reason I knew it was happening. Oh, um, I mean, nobody at your work even talked about it. Mm, Weird. No, not really. I guess yeah, same. Uh, we have enough of a circle of people that we interact with. The people we're talking about, like, oh, we're gonna get home from the sports thing with the kid, and then we're gonna have the party for the thing and watch the fight. And it was like, wait, what? You know? Did none of those people read or l- listen to interviews from Mike Tyson saying that like he gave up because he didn't have the fight in him like ten years ago? <laughs> Oh, I don't know, man. I think from what people took away from that, it was, uh, there's a lot of videos about, like, why did he not punch him right here? And clearly, like, starts to and then stops and doesn't. There's a lot of those videos floating around. So, you know what? We can just leave it there, because I'm not a boxing expert. But, uh, you know, if I'm vegas i'm looking at maybe not allowing betting on these fights anymore because they're clearly fixed i mean vegas loves a fixed fight as long as no one else knows it's fixed <laughs> that's true yeah but Weirdly before though, we get taken it, off the air by vegas let's I was gonna uh, say, let's... It, it sounded like the real losers of the night were netflix oh man yeah you heard about yeah. that i heard about that and they also think that they're gonna stream like other live sports like the super bowl yeah, they've um, got NFL games later this season. Yeah, I was going to say they have NFL games like coming up soon. The Christmas games, right? They have the Christmas games? Uh, yeah, Christmas for think, sure. I don't remember if they have one before that. Yeah. I think it's I think it's game singular, not all day. Okay. Um they I think they're making a bid for the Super Bowl at some point. I don't know how they would get that contract off of uh what is it? It's one of the it's one of the big three. 
That would be wild. It would be wild, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they, whoever has the contract know. has no incentive to give it up unless the contract is expiring. So that's what I wonder. Uh, you know what? We can be successful at something else, like maybe adulting, right? Sometimes we can successfully do a thing. Uh oh. Did we do successfully do a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Remember, uh, I talked a couple uh, more than a few weeks ago, a few months ago, about uh, replacing the igniter in my oven. Yes. Yes. And how yeah. you had to take the entire thing apart. Mm hmm. So uh, the oven stopped working again. Oh, uh, is this a. Uh, was the replacement part um, aftermarket? Yes, because the OEM part was like a hundred something dollars and mm -hmm. everyone online was like, these are the exact same thing. And mm -hmm. to be fair to them, I looked at them after mm -hmm. buying the aftermarket one. Mm -hmm. They are the exact same thing. <laughs> like, okay. okay. At least but as far as the I OEM tell. had some longevity that the other one didn't. Yeah, perhaps so. Mm -hmm. There's a long thread on the uh, Reddit for my refrigerator that detailed a problem that I had that said, I know that the aftermarket water filter looks exactly the same as the LG one. However, something inside causes an air bubble and uh, your entire system will start leaking. And sure enough, the one time I tried the aftermarket one within a few days... Oof. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes they have figured something out. So, you know, for $20, which is how much the, the last one, and you know, $20 in a bunch of my time, I guess, like half a day's worth of time. Well, and another, not, another half day to do it again. So, no, it took less time this time because I knew what I was doing. Okay, fair enough. Um, and... The one I bought this time, it, firstly, I went back and looked. I was like, this seems like it was really fast. And, you know, sure enough, on the reviews, you know, uh, of the, it's like a bunch of people who are like, this is fine, like, great, it did the job, blah, blah, blah. And then there's like, not even very many, but like three bad reviews out of like 500 that are like, this thing only lasted six months and then broke again. Mm. <laughs> and you were like... <laughs> so i kept looking around right i was like okay so like what other ones of these are there because they're sold a bunch of places and this one that i bought firstly came in a box the other one just came uh, in a we're, bag we're upgraded <laughs> okay yeah. it had i a, wonder yeah you know what i think you got the first time what do you think i think you got a disassembled one Mm. taken out of a, a different mm. oven mm -hmm. yeah it's the same thing that starts to happen to old cars right like people just buy up old ovens and then start parting them out could be could Maybe. be is it somebody that around here does this with motorcycles that are over 15 years old he just buys them all up and sits them in his garage and starts listing parts on the internet makes more money than selling the motorcycle by factors of 100 yeah that sounds reasonable right it's like parting out an old PC. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No one wants your whole pre-built PC, but someone wants that graphics card. Someone wants the RAM. Someone wants the yada yada, right? I, that's what I did with my last PC. Absolutely. It was, it sold 10 times faster than the one beforehand that I sold as a whole piece. And the one I sold as a whole piece, I had to do on Facebook marketplace and it was a whole thing, you know? Oh yeah. Did that. Will not do that again. Nope. I'll take it apart and I'll sell it to people in pieces. Yep. Uh, so, you know, the difference is last time it came with like this whole wire assembly. Uh, they had to like, you know, detach these little, you know what like a spade connector is? No, I'm going to have to look that up. So on a wire, the end of the wire, there's this little thing clamped on the end of the oh, wire. I know what this is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it has like two grooves and a flat part connecting the two grooves. Right? I would have called this a terminal connector. The term is a spade. I did not know that. That's cool. But yes, it connects to these, you know, and then the two like rolled grooves on the side plug into a flat piece 
that yeah. connects along the 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 metal part. Is this one you need to crimp and uncrimp, or is it a plug yes. and play situation? Uh, maybe you you could crimp and uncrimp it if you were like able to access <laughs> the interior <laughs> of the oven easily. Okay. Um, but I was not so. And then this one has like a little um, piece in the middle that you can like sort of push to like sort of force it so you can't pull it back up. Right. Right. So, you know, I kind of unpushed that and like forcibly pulled the thing off as best I could and then put the other one on, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um, these are these are created so people uh, that don't know them, uh, instead of splicing things with a wire nut, you, um, y- these are insulated. They have they have insulation around them, which is why they're they're like this. Yeah, and they're not really meant to be removed. Right? No, mm-hmm. yeah, it's more permanent than a wire nut. So, the new one that I got came with wire nuts and just like wire terminals, and then directions, uh, and then directions to just like cut snip, and splice, baby, and splice. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't are feeling. Those, oh. Wire. So I, w- mm-hmm. I wasn't feeling okay. good about that. I will. I wouldn't feel good about it either. Those are just plastic. Uh, no, they were not. They were ceramic. Oh, uh, whoa. Okay. So okay, you know, that's better the, than I expected. Yeah. Well, again, like this one came with a box, and it came with the you know like directions, and it came with wire nuts. The other one okay. came with this big wiring assembly that was and, ripped out of the other. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Yeah, they're out there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Uh-huh. So, I, you know, but it was also cheaper. Like, the other one with the big wiring assembly was, like, $20 less than this one. Sure, Weird. This isn't $100, right? Yeah. No, Still it wasn't. Still saving money. Still saving money. I did not know they made ceramic wire nuts. Uh, they do for this exact purpose, right? Yeah. Makes High temp sense. ceramic yeah, wire nuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's cool. They were, just, they were just little white things. Have you guys ever used wire nuts before? Yes, I use them all the time. I do a lot of electrical work in the house here. Have you ever used them, Michael? Um, yes, but it's been a long time. Andy, can you explain to me how you join two wires using a wire nut? You join them first, and then you wrap the wire nut around those? How would you join them? Uh, twist them around each other. Michael, how would you use a wire nut? Uh, yeah, I think I did it the same way. You twist them together and then slide it in and... Well, you, you, yeah, you, so you yeah, yeah. Pre, pre-twist your wires and then you, you run the wire nut down as far as it goes and then you start twisting the wire nut. That's the proper way to do it. So, I uh, consulted the internet on this because I had only used wire nuts like a couple of times and the directions are just like splice and attach and then you're done. Mm-hmm. And you can like be lazy, and if you can get the the wires close enough together, uh, the wire nut will twist them for you. That's actually the proper way to use a wire nut. Oh, really? Hmm. The action of putting... So, yeah, you're supposed to get the wires, you know, up in there. But when you twist the wire nut, it twists the wires for you. Mm-hmm. And the, the it, purpose... It will do it. Yeah. yeah. And the purpose of the, of not pre-twisting it is that the uh the wire nut has enough like what's the spirals or whatever to like guarantee you get it looped like the two wires like looped into each other a certain number of times and that the and then you know the wire connection will be tight inside there because the wire nut will have like the it will have made the two wires move right so they're kind of like touching the outside of it so they're not going to pull out either Cool. Interesting. All right. Yeah. yeah. I watched yeah. uh I watched a union electrician wire some wire nuts and he pre-twisted them. So I, maybe that's just old habits. I the the thing that I was watching said is like this is what the wire nut was designed to do. You don't have to pre-twist it. Like yeah. it it twists it for you. That's the point. Cool. Who knows? Like obviously people have been pre-twisting wires for thousands of years. <laughs> it works fine. <laughs> um, I was just curious because I hadn't used one since I was like 20. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure I was doing it right. Um, cool. Cool. The only thing I wish I had was like some good, like 
wire strippers. Oh yeah. You got to get a good are, pair of those. Cause these are like big insulated wires. Mm-hmm. Is they're inside your oven? Right. Mm-hmm. And you can't just like, you know, you're back in there. There's not a ton of like lead on that wire. So I can't just like, you know, lean over and like spend a bunch of time with like a little exacto knife, cutting the thing open and like <laughs> scraping it out really mm-hmm. nice. So like my, uh, my splicing on that end was pretty bad. The The new one came pre, you know, exposed on the end. So like you didn't sure. have to do anything on that end, but of course the other end uh, looks a little jank, I'll say, but we got it done. And then, you know, as soon as I plugged it back in and turned it on, bam, like, you know, on immediately. Everything works. I have a feeling you'll get a good life out of this one. It sounds like, sounds like the right thing to have done. It's to yeah. upgrade a little bit. I think we might want to start looking for a new oven anyway, but yeah, join join us in the electric oven situation. It's quite nice. Yeah, got the gas line there already, though. It's like, meh. Yeah, nothing prevents yeah. you just capping it and, you know. Yeah, we'll see. The uh, convection would be nice for sure. Oh, yeah. That alone is worth a new oven. I miss having a, a convection oven. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's cool. I mean... It's not cool that you had to redo it, but it's cool that you got to. It was nice that I had, I was able to do it way faster this time though, because I knew exactly what I was doing. It's like, okay, door down, like unscrew these two things, lift this thing out, undo this one thing, take this out. Here's the thing. Two nuts, bam, bam. Like. I, I think you should give yourself leave next time you take on one of these projects to buy yourself the nice tools also, because you've already saved the money twice now of having a repair person come out. A, a really nice pair of wire strippers is like 40 bucks max. I mean, that's yeah. like a really nice pair. I mean, I got a nice multimeter for Christmas uh, several years ago and I used it again. It's like, oh yeah, like the continuity on this old one is zero. And on this other one, it's like 40 ohms or whatever the like, you know, the, clearly the proving the old one. Ohms. <laughs> it, clearly proving the old one was broken, right? Somewhere. Yeah. And the new one was still working. Yeah. So nice. yeah, I mean, tools are great. Um, I don't. The thing is, like, wire strippers. Like, when the heck are you going to use that? Right? Except for obviously. <laughs> so you know, I don't know. It build your tool chest, man. Because then the next time, you know, if if you end up wanting to put in a extra outlet or something, then you got wire strippers all ready to go. Man, I don't know. I want to mess around with. AC. I'm <laughs> mm, no. Nah, I think I'm scared of that. <laughs> I have a healthy respect of electricity, and AC is not something I'm going to mess with. They they make these little things that turn off the power in your house. Yeah, but like that thing, and you have a multimeter. That, yeah, <laughs> you can make sure you're not going to electrocute yourself. The thing that does that to my house is from like the 70s, though. So we really should be replacing mm, that. Sounds too. like an even more fun project is on the way. Bro, there's no amount of money you could pay me to replace the breaker panel in my house. Like ten million dollars is not enough. I'm, I'm calling an electrician. My, I'm, I'm, I'm rethinking my electric oven suggestion. I mean, that's easy. You just plug that in, right? Like that. No, well, not with a 1970s panel. You don't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know if the kitchen has enough power to do that. Yeah, I'm guessing not. You'd find I'm out real fast, not. though. Does well, an electric oven use one of the two like forty outlets, or does it use just? Uh, a normal? You need to. An electric oven has a dedicated line. It's it's yes. Um, mm, okay. Yeah, we might not have that if, option then. I don't know if, if it's pro- there's if one properly right there. wired. A modern kitchen has five lines in it, and one of them is a um two twenty for an electric oven. Okay. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if it's back there. I haven't looked. Uh, well, Heritage Barbecue does not use electric, uh, so you might be in good company there. We didn't talk about it last week, but we went to the actual, I guess you would call it original, even though it's not the first time Heritage cooked somewhere, location in San Juan Capistrano. The OG permanent location. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of qualifiers there, but the, the most famous of Heritage locations, the one gunning for a Michelin star. Yeah. I So you had was, not been before. 
not to i mean i've had his food before sure sure yeah but you've many not times. been to the location and i had not been to that location no they have another location which is more like a brew pub situation um Hundred percent, I agree with all the people that said that this is the spot, and the other spot is not the spot. They got to do something about the different vibes. Yeah, and I don't know if it's like just the qual, like what they're doing at the other place, just is not as good or whatever. Because like they make the trays the same way too. If you buy a big uh, tray for there, they make it all pretty and whatever. Yeah, just, the food just isn't as good. I just don't know what the deal is. The taco looked exactly the same as the one that I ha- I saw when we were at the other location. I had ordered the tacos, which is why I did not order them at this location. And it looked exactly the same, but I don't know if it ended up tasting the same. Yeah, um, I, mean, I, got, I got the brisket sandwich this time and it was like amazing. Or sorry, tri-tip sandwich, but you know, it was amazing. But dude, I ate had that tri-tip cold like two days later and it was wonderful. Same here. And oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Yeah, I had we had leftover brisket that we took home, and I had that for lunch one day, and it was like amazing. I made brisket tacos with our leftovers. Heck yeah, yeah man. dude! Uh, that's definitely a location where you 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 walk away with the plan to order too much. There's no reason you go there for just like one meal's worth of food, especially no, after an hour and a half wait. Yeah, exactly. But like that hour and a half wait totally justified like IMO. I think so. I think they need to do a little bit of something about the meat market style to cut down on service time because it definitely takes over five minutes, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They could pre-size some of those things. Like they don't need to pull out a rack of beef ribs every single time someone orders them and be like, okay, how many you want? It's like pre-cut a bunch of that stuff, man. (laughs) You know? Especially think that like for something like the brisket, you know, the beef ribs, maybe because they're only doing them on like, you know, weekends or whatever, like maybe they're trying to save waste there or something. I don't know. But like the brisket, they're going to slice it anyway. Yeah. So just slice it. Brisket as just a whole thing usually. So just slice it and then weigh it (laughs) after. Weigh the slices. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same. You, do it, you keep it whole to keep it from drying out, right? I get that. <sighs> sure, but like, how? But as, long as, as long through, as they're, as so long as they're going through, as there's fast. a line, yeah. as long as there's a line, someone's ordering brisket, <laughs> right? So just have a pile of brisket that's right there, cut already for the next ten people in line. Then, then when you need a new one, slice up a new one. It's not like cut fifteen briskets and then let them all dry out. I'm yeah. just saying, like. That tri tip got cut right in front of me. That's great and fun and cool. But then I, you know, I know people before and after me ordered tri tip. So, you know, it felt a little bit time wasty. The vibe, yeah. though, is probably the reason why people like it so much. And that was cool to see that it was kind of like more like a, a market than a restaurant. But they are gunning to be a, a restaurant, restaurant in the future soon. So, you know, the logistics aside, the food was. Top to bottom, amazing. I think they need to give out more of those pickles and onions, though. You can, <laughs> ask, you can ask for more. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. You could just say, oh, can we get more of the fixings? They'll be like, oh, yeah. They'll throw extras in there. Well, next time. Next yep. time. Uh, I did eat those a day later, and let me tell you. <laughs> got, a little, got a little punchy. <sighs> I'm I'm recovered he's now, still, but he's still, he's still, he's still breathing it. hard. Yeah, I can, Dude, those, those I can jalapenos his, are not a joke. They I are, can hear his nose running. They are serious. Yeah, we uh, they did. They're awesome, but yeah. Has Andy or I told you the story of our uh, our yearly uh, uh, hot pot dinners? Oh, on speaking, me. speaking of some serious jalapenos. Get give it to him, Michael. We so we have a good friend whose uh, whose birthday is the day before the Fourth of July, July third, and so frequently will throw themselves a birthday party because no one's doing anything the next day, right? No one has to go to work, um, and so they have a nice backyard setup and a bunch of camp stoves, and so they the last several birthdays have been a uh, a DIY hot pot and. 
they've got a big garden and grow among other things fresh jalapenos in the garden so the jalapenos mm-hmm. always make an appearance um when making your your bowl of sauce for dipping your your meat and veggies into and let me tell you the those fresh ones they they pack a punch but she doesn't it's, but it's not every one of them so you're playing a little yeah. bit of roulette uh well so the roulette is not played by most people as most people are not served the, f- the freshest of jalapenos <laughs> right uh due to their spice level but Andy michael and, and i usually have a reserved <laughs> tray <laughs> And, uh, yeah, uh-huh. I'm sweating hurts, by the end of that hurts, dinner. Hurts so good. I'm sweating by the end of that dinner, for sure. I'll just but say But you know what? Yeah. Unlike, like, most peppers and stuff, like, you can have distress after. I never have a problem later on with those peppers. There's something about how fresh they are, how good they are. They're not a situation. They're spicy, and then they go away. Yeah. I- I, I feel like, you know, we use jalapenos in our cooking sometimes. We make chili. We'll chop some up and throw them in there. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll use them in other various kinds of dishes. And I feel like it is a real gamble for ones you buy from the store. And, you know, like we live in an Asian area, so it's not like we're necessarily going to the white people supermarket. <laughs> like they're mm-hmm. de-seeding them at Vons or whatever. Mm-hmm. And dude, sometimes you just get jalapenos. They aren't that spicy. Yeah. It's just like this one is like I could just eat this raw and like it would be fine. All the seeds. It, I am convinced that watering makes a plays a significant role in the spice level of the pepper. Some uh, one year we got um, shishito peppers from a neighbor and they warned us. They're like, they're all kind of spicy this year. I'm not really sure what happened, but I went on vacation for a few weeks and the watering system broke. And so there was no watering for a few weeks and they're really spicy. So I don't know, you know, to me, it's like if you water over, over, over water them, maybe they're not as spicy. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Cause like Stephanie grows them sometimes and usually they're like spicier than the ones that we get at the supermarket, but they're not outrageous. Mm. Um, we okay. usually have to step up to like habaneros or something before it's like, okay, these are always spicy. <laughs> Serranos. No, Serranos are not always spicy. Pasillas are not always spicy. Yeah, you probably got to move way up there to get some super spicy. You know what was spicy this week was some randy football. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, did you survive, JJ? It's time to let us know. I was not cut. Oof. I was sweating there for you. S- second lowest two weeks in a row. <laughs> But as long as you keep being second lowest, you eventually win, right? I, no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Is that how if that works? If there's only two people left and you're second lowest, you're first. Well, there you go. <laughs> okay. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> Be second lowest every week. You win. Never, never call yourself the best. Only compare yourself to the worst. Yeah. That's what the guillotine is. His head gets cut off, not mine. So... <laughs> Did you uh, know their last guillotining in France was in like the, the 1960s or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it's, it's way more recent than you think. Damn, that's cool. We should bring that back over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just one of those things where, where it's like, you know, maybe maybe things have moved very fast in the last hundred years. If we were guillotining people in 1977 or whatever it was, I don't know. That, that is wild. Uh, but I mean, we're down to five people in that league. It is not many people. Five people? Five left. Yeah. Jesus. So think about this. Like, imagine the waiver wire in that league. It's just full. It's just you, full. You don't. You can't you know who, have you know enough who? players on your team. Yeah, because our benches aren't that big either, right? You know yeah. who's on the waiver wire this week? Alvin Kamara. Just no sitting one, there because wow. no one can take him. Just sitting there. Jaden Daniels. Wow. Okay. That, that turned out to be a good call this week. But <laughs> yeah. Well, mm-hmm. But you know, it's like guys like that. It's like these are playable dudes in every league. And you're, you're just thinking, it's like, wait a minute. 
no, not, we're at the point now where it's like, I'm just playing matchups every week. Yeah, you're going to have to. Yeah, now it's now it's sports. Now it's not. Yeah, not it doesn't. The rest even, of it, you know? it doesn't even matter. Like you know, oh, uh, is this like, if you're playing a guy who's not in the top ten and you're in his position, what are you even doing? Fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Like unless you know that this guy's getting thirty points somehow, because yeah, some guy always gets thirty points. But yeah, it's wild now. I'm sorry to say, I, I guess I outthought myself to victory here and I'm now 10 and 1 and not 11 and 0. Oh no, still it, first place. Boo hoo. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a little bit of insult to it because it was like I had the Broncos defense who got eight points more than the Packers defense who I picked up because I thought the Broncos defense may not hold up. I second guessed my tight end play three times and I could have had four more points there. I changed receivers because they changed quarterbacks from Josh Downs to Calvin Ridley, and that would have got me 10 more points there. I changed kickers this week, and that would have got me four more points there. That alone wins me the game. But the worst insult of the whole thing was I dropped Javante Williams, who I've had the entire season sitting on my bench all season waiting to play if I ever needed him. And keeping him off the waiver wire was the big thing, right? The strategy of he's a starting running back. He needs to be on a roster and not on anyone else's roster. Mm -hmm. And the Broncos last week were like, Audric Easton is the new guy. He's the head running back. He's going to be taking over the backfield. Javante Williams is done. My opponent picks up Javante Williams and I'm kind of like, okay, well that sucks. You know, uh, maybe he'll get seven or eight points as the backup, uh, then plays him and gets 18 points. Hmm. Easton's on my bench with five. So that's a 13 point swing. If just alone right there, I don't know. I just feel like even in a game where I score 125 points and lose with, what is it? The third, nah, maybe the second one, two, three, oh, three people ended up scoring above me this week in a team in a league of 12. That's still pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a bummer, you know, a bummer of a loss when you talk yourself out of a victory. A yeah, little mean, bit. Hindsight is always 2020 20 or something like that. Right. Sure. Yeah. Bo Nix looked great though. Huh? Sure did. Sure did. Yeah. I, I hope they keep it up. I think there's a argument to be had if you redrafted right now, right? It's like, okay, we're starting over. The league starts today, right? Mm -hmm. Pick one, Saquon Barkley. Uh oh. Probably, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely not Christian McCaffrey. You've lost way too many weeks. No. Well, it doesn't matter in the past, right? You're drafting today, so you're talking about. Oh, if you were potential. if you were going to draft the top players starting today to you're, play you're making, a new season starting you're, today, yeah, you're making a brand new league. It starts today, right, and goes okay, to the end. Sure, sure. Saquon Barkley, number one, but Ooh. like, who's the first quarterback? Like, no, I don't know if it's Saquon Barkley, number one. What about Derrick Henry's season? Barkley's been scoring more points than Henry as no, a person incorrect. who has been playing against him. Incorrect. Unless it's because of the PPR difference. Uh, certainly, Henry doesn't catch passes, so... Uh, just saying, in my league, Barkley has, is second in points to Henry. Because I have Henry on my roster, and he's position one for that position. The last four weeks, Derek Henry's points in my league. 14.2, 25.8, okay, very good. 13.6, 10.5. Okay, but so it's, you're just it's going off the last couple It's weeks. trending, right? He's trending in a different direction than Saquon. Saquon is now. trending up. Yeah. You're, you're taking him for the rest of the, the season, right? Okay. You care All about right. now. You don't care about past production. All right. So Saquon, fine. It's still a running back, and it's between Henry, yes. Saquon, or or Kamara. Yeah, I think those are all reasonable shots, right? That's a, that's like, who, your first pick, one of those. Yeah. So who do you think is the first quarterback in that situation then? I don't think Josh Bo Allen. I don't think Josh Allen's points have been that hot. 
he just scored like 25 points. But the thing is, he's consistent. He's going to he get has, you 20 points a game every game. He hasn't had less than 20 points since they played Houston in week five. Okay. All right. He's out there then for sure. But I but think it also, I just argue also, at this so point. The question for you though, JJ, four point or six point passing touchdown? Four point. State okay. Uh, that, yeah. So that changes that changes the calculus a little bit. Yeah, if, if you have six point passing TDs, a lot of the like pure passer guys go up in value, right? Versus Which is all why the I kind of like it. But there's not as many running quarterbacks as there used to be, so it's not as big a deal. And there's quite a bit this year, though, because like well, Lamar Jackson still runs, I guess. But Jalen yeah, Hurts, I mean, like Jalen Hurts I, runs. I I think like you know Lamar, Allen, Hurts, all three of those guys are getting you tons of running yards, and and Jaden Daniels too, until recently for whatever reason. Is Josh Allen getting a lot of running yards still? I guess. Yeah. I guess he is. A fair number of his points are coming off, yeah, of, he, off of rushing yeah. and rushing The last rushing two touchdown. games he had over like 50, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's and not he had like two he, rushing touchdowns. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the rushing touchdowns are big because those are six instead of four. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's also it's not like he's getting 50 yards and running 10 yards at a clip or whatever. He's like scrambling for three and I five. I think the thing that bummed that me out bunch. the most this week was uh, Amon Ross St. Brown scoring 40 points against me. It's like you got 15 points all season, and the week I'm playing against you, you could score 40. Thanks a lot. Uh, the two running backs on the Lions also scored like 40. It was just they were just decimating <laughs> their opponents. So, I mean, 52 points, everyone's going to get in on it, right? I mean, yeah. they're, they're, that team is like playing through trauma or something. Score that many. The Lions have been. Uh, dealing with being bad for a long time i guess i think your number one receiver still is jamar chase just like he was at the beginning of the season which is funny because he's actually was terrible for like the first several weeks right until they finally turned it on but yeah, yeah, yeah I I agree with you. he would be he would be number one uh, the problem being though guess what he's on a bye this week mm. so is alan so is and, josh allen right if you want to talk about the rest yeah. of the season. I mean, it's a it's a theoretical draft. We could wa- work around the buys. I think here. Uh, yeah, totally. It, but the thing I'm curious about: there are no weeks off in the Guillotine League. People that are relying on Burrow and Chase and Allen are about to have a bad week. <laughs> mm, good point. And like, yeah, yeah there's good, just there's, be like, well, well, I'm cruising to the title anyway. It doesn't matter. Yeah, there's good people on the waiver wire, of course, but like, yeah, but you're, you're not picking drop- up. Jamar Chase level people, right? Right. Who are you going to drop too? All, to and all you got, all you got to do is not be last, right? But you replace mm-hmm. a guy with Chase with a guy who's like you know fourteenth in the position. That's quite a big downgrade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's so interesting. I'm, I'm up against it this week, and one of my one of my teams has nine spots on by. What? Oh. Yeah, what did it you just do it. Uh, in making trades, I lost sight of of what the bye weeks of all of them were, and it's all lined up to be this weekend this year. I don't think this has ever happened to me before. Like so this that's bad. insane. I mean, the only option is either you just tank the week and be like, "I have no option. I can't win." Like, do you even have enough I, space to hold all those guys on a bench? I I don't not not to hold them and pick up enough people to fill in a full starting There's roster. No way, yeah. You're, There's no way. You're, you're nobody's going to trade you right now. Uh, we're past the deadline. Yeah, past the trade deadline for most leagues. So oh, even man, if I even rough. if I wanted to, so yeah, I might I might just have to say this is a lost week and regroup for next week. Can you? Are you? I've clinched a playoff spot clearly. Uh, I'm I'm like right up? I'm right in the middle of the pack. Um, oh no, I'm actually better than I than I thought I was. I'm in fourth, so I should be okay to make the playoffs. Yeah, still, should be all right. My regular league has no clinched playoff. Listen to the grouping on this. First place is seven and four. Wow, tied with second and third at seven and four. Then there are two teams at five and at six and five, and then one, two, three, four, five teams at five and six, and the last place guy is two and nine. <laughs> Ooh, talk about parody! Oh, you want to yeah. go through our like? What's funny so, is this: it's so close, like no one can clinch, and everyone could lose out if they lose. <laughs> <laughs> 
This week was the first week my uh, I didn't feel like maybe it was a little bit lopsided in the standings in our league because the points for and points against are pretty. They're pretty rough if, if you've played against my team because <laughs> it's been like 130 points every week. Mm-hmm. But uh, it points against I'm actually somewhat up up there in terms of people that are playing against me anyway. Uh, ten and one, eight and three, seven four, six five, six five, five six five, six five, six four, seven four, seven three eight three eight. So the league is close, except for you. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. My my second league is kind of like that. We have one at the bottom at one and ten. I'm at the top at nine and two, and then the other eight players are in the middle between three and eight and eight and three. There you go. You know what I would like to see, and I don't know why it exists or why it doesn't exist. I mean, maybe we should invent it. Even with baseball having existed, why is there no fantasy football manager game? Yeah, that is interesting. I'm surprised there aren't. There must, dude. There must be a football manager, not fantasy well, football manager, but a football right, manager. I'm, there's, I mean, there's definitely like soccer football manager. Yeah, right? I know I, that one for sure exists. Maybe there's just not enough market for people that would want to do like American football because it's just not as popular other places. But like, wouldn't it be fun to just be able to like play through a fantasy season in a couple hours where the game could like give you projected players and stuff like that? Just like sim the game part and be like, all sim, right, like sim oh, the games. I want to rankings, do all the same exact stats, and you could like play as a fantasy football manager, and then and you just wouldn't have, have a whole season. I don't, I don't think it should mirror like real seasons or anything like that. It should be more like a like a career mode in a you know football yeah, game or whatever. Try and build a a real team. Try to like draft stars, draft people, so that you can make like your team get a run to the playoffs yeah. or whatever why doesn't you know, that exist maybe that does exist in the like football like madden games in like one of those modes that none of us use maybe i mean I that know. would be like building a team team more like a football manager style thing and that, you know or like f1 manager right i'm yeah. thinking more along the lines of like no i want a fantasy football roster i want a fake season like baseball i want to pick mm. players you know, I mean, there is nothing stopping you from drafting a new league anytime you want, right? I, there, I guess, but, and either, but the idea that you could sit down and do a 16 week season in like a few hours. Hmm. There apparently you know I mean? is, a, is a game called Ultimate Football GM. Yeah, I guess it's more like a, like managing a real football team. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, football manager, F1 manager, these types of games are out there. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you just want to, like, practice the skills of making a roster and making moves during the fantasy season, right? Maybe. Or just the idea that you can, uh, like, kind of enjoy the ups and downs of a fantasy season without many real consequences would be kind of fun. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It wasn't just me this week when we tried to play Black Ops 6 uh, slash the new Warzone. Uh, how can companies have so much money and not make a PC app that works, you guys? I downloaded 275 gigabytes of data to try Ooh. to play three games worth of Warzone and have it crash every single time. And the two, the one game it didn't crash during the game, I couldn't talk to my friends because the audio chat was just muted and wouldn't unmute no matter what I did. Super great. Uninstall. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty great. I don't understand how the console versions work better than a PC, but... I mean, I mean you know the answer to that. I shouldn't know the answer to that, though, at this stage, right? The answer is they put their money on those, and they don't spend any time on the PC one. That's why. 
more people play it on the PC for streaming than on the on the consoles. So why wouldn't they want that one to work? You, you think more people stream the game on PC than play it on consoles? No. But if they can't get people to stream the thing because it crashes all the time, then they're not going to get people to play it on the consoles, right? Because all the streamers will say, oh, we can't play it, so we don't, you know? I don't think that's necessarily going to impact their sales that to that yeah. degree, yeah, right? If they're just cares. if they're just making pure sales without needing the people to wait on streamers to tell them whether or not it's worth their time, then what do they care? All right. People buy Call of Duty to play Call of Duty, and well, the, they're not paying any attention thing. to whether people think it's good or not. Here's the thing that surprises me the most, then. Call of Duty is now free if you have Game Pass. Half the people that have Game Pass have got to be trying to play it on a PC, right? Or is it still that many people playing it on an Xbox? It, I mean, I think the majority of people using Game Pass are probably using it on an Xbox. But I don't right. have any data on that, although I'm sure Microsoft does. Yeah. I want to send you guys something. As I uh, hope people will remember, JJ was building up a new PC case. Not a PC, but a new PC case. So, I mean, I guess on the console topic, most mm. consoles are PlayStations, not Xboxes. This is true. Absolutely. Positively true. Uh, I'll send this in the Discord chat because it's easier for me to send it from the PC. Uh, you bought a new case, JJ, and uh, it inspired me to look around for other weird cases that are out there that are similar to that fish tank case kind of thing that you sent. And this one from Thermal Take looks very odd at the beginning. It looks kind of like an older PC case, but then you can kind of lay it at an angle. Take, take a look at this thing and tell me how, how you feel about it. This is called the Tower 600. They're getting uh, out there with I the ideas. The, I see them laying it at an angle. Yeah. You, you know what? You know what the aesthetic of this is to me? The just the first thing that popped into my head when I saw the first picture. Did you guys mm -hmm. ever have the that little like car game as a kid where it had it was full of water and it had the two big buttons and you were trying to like use the buttons to blow rings onto little uh, little targets? Yes, yes, I know what you're talking you about. You know what I'm talking yes. about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little yeah, yeah, water yeah. games. Uh -huh. Yeah, we had a bunch of those types of things. That's exactly what it looks. That's exactly what it looks like to me. Yeah. Uh huh. I could see that. I don't like I how this it, looks. You don't like it. I think my issue with this is it's a the front quote unquote of the case is the uh -huh. thing I think should be the side. It's oriented like 90 degrees from how I think a case should be. <laughs> this to me looks like a alien to meets Battlestar Galactica aesthetic of like, it's the future. The corners are missing. Yeah. Some of those aquarium cases have something like this, but this is like way different, I think in yeah. a few different directions. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, in, in aesthetically, it's interesting. The angle like you can lay it down it's weird it's one of those things where someone set out can i make a case that doesn't have any 90 degree angles in it right i guess <laughs> i don't know what you do with the extra space though like it doesn't like i guess it comes out like that so that you can stick the like tall video card and stuff in there but like wh wh and even then where's why the, yeah what are you doing you know, with that like yeah and and the angle at which the power supply is going to sit is going to be very strange the world of cases is going to be weird. And the air, on. like the air coming in from the side where the, the radiator or the, the fans are, isn't going to like work right. If the video card is not aligned with them, like if it's deeper or shallower or whatever, I'm very confusing. Yeah. Well, uh, I think since we're still on PCs, we can kind of shift a little bit by talking about PC and console games with the announcement of the games of the year that came out. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm run through this list. It was controversial. 
It was only four games on it, right? It was a Balatra. Uh, yeah, that was one of them. There was more than it four. It was uh, Wukong. The mm-hmm. Black Black Myth, is it called? Black Myth Wukong, I think mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. one of the... T- um, Astrobot. Astrobot, that's the third one. And then the controversial one is DLC. <laughs> For, well, for Demon Soul? There's more. Hold on. There's six. Yeah, there's six. six. Yeah. So Island Shadow Island. of the Erd Tree is the one you're talking about. Yep. Mm-hmm. For Elden Ring. And then there's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. That's DLC also? No, it's not. No, no Final that's, Fantasy that's, VII Rebirth that's is part the second two. game. Yeah. Yeah. And then Metaphor Refantasio. Oh, Metaphor Refantasio was on the list also. You're, yes. You're forgiven. This was a year for stupid names. So four of the six have really dumb names. Black Myth Wukong. Metaphor Re Fantasio. There's two colons right there. Shadow of the Erdry. Uh, Metaphor only has one colon. How dare you? It's No, two colons between two games. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. So six games. One is a DLC. Can't win, right? Elden yeah. Ring won last year. According to the Game Awards rules, uh, they're available and you can go vote. So, you know. It's a popularity uh, contest, right? I, I think uh, Palatro should be happy to be nominated. Palatro is absolutely happy here. to be nominated. <laughs> I mean, that's it was mostly a PC game for a long time. I'm surprised it got enough notoriety to even be anything more than a side nomination. Uh, I assume the popularity contest is going to come down to Final Fantasy and Erd Tree. But I have no idea what is more popular or if Astrobot is super popular among people I don't know. I think Astrobot got a nod for being unique and creative and fun. I mean, it's it's nominated in more of the other categories than I think any other game was. Right. So it won't win this one because it'll win other stuff, which is the thing that happens at the Oscars all the time. Oh, at every award show. Yeah, I think that's also true with metaphor because it's nominated a bunch of like story and other kinds of categories, and it's unlikely to win this over the other ones up there. I was surprised not to see Unicorn Overlord on the list very much, given how much it got talked about in similar amounts to like a Bellatro. It came out last year, firstly, so I think that's part Did of it? the issue. Pretty sure. Af- oh, okay. That was a Switch game from last year, I thought. I thought it was 2024. Hmm, eh, maybe you're right. Just probably came out too long ago for people to even remember it was around. I just remember it being talked about kind of like in the... I don't think it was nearly as popular as the Final Fantasy. I'm just saying it, it, it surprises me with Bellatra on the list that, that a game like that wouldn't have been picked up. Yeah, it released March 8th, 2024. You're right. There you go. I can't remember there were six games, but I can remember other games that weren't listed. <laughs> That's okay. I think, though, it's a good opportunity to remind ourselves that things of the year are due very soon. Yeah, I'll have to think, man. I don't know what uh, what I'm going to do for that. Yeah, same here. 2024 is going to be a rough things of the year because a lot of the things that I have enjoyed this year are things I've enjoyed in previous years. I mean, obviously, Bellatro is up there. Yeah, I actually have... uh, I used a thing uh, from you, Andy, this year, and I've actually been keeping track of the games that I've played this year. So I could, in theory, do a list. You could do a list. I could do a list. I mean, I, I continued my upward progress in keeping track of the things that I have done this year, and it has inspired me to keep track of and uh, adjust my, you know, adjust my diet per se, I guess. In a positive way. (laughs) I think (laughs) one would hope. I I think. Yeah, no, it's good. It's a good thing. Yeah, we could, we could, we could switch it up. Hmm. Maybe people could email a thing of the year since we're giving them pre-warning that that's a 
that's a thing oh, we yeah. do. We should uh, we should solicit. We've we've always done our own, but we've never asked. Uh, we've ne- certainly never asked ahead of time for other people's things of the year. Okay, Unicorn Overlord was nominated for best strategy slash sim game. That's the probably game the Wars. best it's gonna do, right? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be the best it'll do. <laughs> They're lucky to have come out this year and not next year when they release a new Civ, and that just crushes that whole category. All the four X four X slash strategy slash everything category. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think it's a great idea, Michael. Uh, people should send us their thing of the year. I would be super interested. And yeah. they can send that to podcast at wewergamers.com. Do we tease some thoughts for next week about how we should talk about uh, some movies we all watched? Uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to dilate some time next week. We watched we all watched a movie. Yeah, man. Like and does does anything matter, you know? Time. D- mm, it's a flat circle. Or I'll as just... steep I'll be interested to hear you guys' thoughts on the grandma. Oh, well. Small small side note. I mean, that's not a small side note at all, <laughs> my man. That's that's kind of the whole thing. I there's there's a lot of people out there that care about the grandma. I guess do people do we want to tell people what to watch ahead of next week? No. Make it a surprise, and then they can watch it. Yeah. 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 And uh next week also. Andy's list of things he doesn't like about Echoes of Wisdom. Because there's starting to be some. The other other shoe is dropping. How far are you, Andy? I gotta know. Um, Closing Gerudo Rifts. Okay. But you haven't done any other big areas yet. Are you in the big rift Uh, or like closing the small ones? Oh, no. The small, you can't close the small ones, my man. Okay. Pat's on the head. <laughs> well, the two that I've been to can't be closed, so. You're in the group. I've had a lot of fun. Yeah. What? Yeah. I've You're had a lot group. of fun. Okay. But is, it's, this, uh, is this the first area t- you went to after the forest, after you it's, explored? It's tough to fight my nature and not explore everything. So, like, I run across a lady that says she wants to do a foot race. I'm going to spend time doing that and not the main quest. Oh, no, nothing wrong with that. The mini games are some of the fun stuff in there for sure. Yeah. And then, and then I'm going to do other mini games to realize that there's got to be something later in the game that's going to help me finish this mini game mm. after I spend half an hour trying to beat this mini. You know what I mean? Like, that kind of stuff. I'm not sure how many of them actually have things that will help you. Maybe the foot race one. I'm not sure how the foot race goes. I didn't play that one more than a couple it's times. Fine. It's fine. No big deal. But like, you're not going to get I, dash boots. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> I'm still enjoying doing it without a guide or anything like that. Letting things be what they are. Finding mic crystals randomly is, is quite a bit of fun. But I'm saving the things I don't like till next week. So you got to come back. Yep, episode yep. 427 podcast at we were right that's the one <laughs>